today, Laurie, we're going back in time once again to 1966. Nice. With a Tam Navillan. Now, Tam Navillan, we see quite a lot now as a kind of very affordable oh, yeah. supermarket brand that plays around the wine casks and part of the White Mackay portfolio. But this is something different because this is actually the year the distillery was founded. Okay. It's quite rare with old distilleries to try something the year it was founded. But I suppose this is quite modern if it was founded in 1966. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it also shows, obviously this isn't an official bottling no. Tam Nulun, this is an, an independent bottling by Moon Import, who are sort of legendary Italian bottlers. That makes and it I even think, more exciting. Yeah. And I think it also shows their sort of foresight and the fact that they were oh. visionaries. They could see the potential of single malts at a time when it wasn't really a thing. And, and so an Italian import, a 12-year-old Speyside whiskey, mm. was probably quite a good thing to try to introduce into the market at the time um, in 88 when this was bottled. Yeah, I think their approach was basically just to introduce their market to something that was completely new. Yeah. So I imagine as soon as they sort of came across this cask or parcel of stock, they thought, you know, who knows Tam Navoulin? Nobody. Let's, yeah. let's taste it, bottle it. See how it goes. Yeah, um, quite interesting. Um, I feel like yeah, so it's 22 years old. Um, and I suppose Glen Grant would have been getting quite popular at the time mm. uh, in Italy. So why not do another kind of nondescript space side? That's, I certainly think of Town of Villain as a bit of a nondescript space side. And I've only maybe had one of the old style releases because they actually, <laughs> although they're modern, 1966, they went out of business yeah. in 1995. Okay. Um, and reopened in 2007. So a lot of people that might not know the brand can almost treat the liquid now as a kind of new distillery. Yeah, um, I think that's fair. I think at that time, it was it was Invergordon Distillers mm. that owned it. Um, and I think they also shut Brewer Claddy around that time as well, where they acquired it. Yeah, White Mackay, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I sort of hung on to it for two or three years and thought, we don't really know mm. what to do with this, mm. let's mothball it for a bit. Yeah, it's weird the, the way that works out. So this is good. I don't know what to anticipate from this because... It's the old distillation, mm. the old style. Oddly, they started. They did actually do six weeks of production in the year two thousand. No While idea, they were moth just for no, no just idea for why. Yeah. All the books, all this, everything I've read about Tam Navillan talks about reopening after twelve years. Mm. But they did have a six-week period where they made whiskey. So we might occasionally see a year two thousand whiskey okay. pop up from them. Maybe they just went back in just to check it everything. Just, just check I everything just, was still working. Yeah, I suppose Make it sure was, at least. pipes haven't frozen over. Yeah, who knows? Let, let's get it open. Let's see what you think. Sure. Thank goodness we've got the old retro screw cap, which we love. It just makes life easier, doesn't it? <laughs> you no know, messing around with corks. Um, and so Tam Navoula, in terms of its kind of house style, kind of distillery DNA, as you say, in this day and age, we know the sort of entry-level supermarket expressions have maybe been finished in various wine casks, but it's, I think of this age, what do you say, it's quite a typical space yeah. side malt. It's kind of light and smooth and fruity. And and I, I, I imagine this would have been quite a premium offering, a 22-year-old space side mm. whiskey in the late 80s for an export market. Yeah. I'm expecting it to still be quite safe. In character, quite quite approachable, easy drinking. Um, about this, the, I mean, the birds on on the label mm. and stuff. This is quite a, a well known series as well from Moon Import. Right? Yeah, so Moon Import did obviously several series. Mm -hmm. They did two versions of the birds series. Okay. Um, this one was actually released the year after Birds Mark One, so it's not technically part of the series. Okay. But obviously, given the presentation, it is often sort of grouped. Yeah, it looks beautiful. It, it looks um, really nice. Yeah, uh, I think that's what makes Moon Import quite distinctive. Mm -hmm. um, is that all the artwork was sort of handpicked by Pep Monjardino, who was okay. the sort of founder of Moon Import. He often looked through kind of old encyclopedias and stuff. I thought that looks cool. I'll stick it on a whiskey label. Um, so very distinctive. Again, very ahead of its time. Learned something new today. I, had no, I didn't know, no, I'd never no. heard of that before. <laughs> what strength are we bottled at? 45%. Uh, okay, so it should be quite approachable as well. I can actually smell it already. It mm. smells kind of fresh, light. Yeah. It's, uh... Maybe that slight mustiness, kind of, that kind know, of musty old books. You do get um, that from old, some of these old bottlings. Well, it's amazing we're here in 2024. <laughs> it's bottled yeah. in 1988. Um, I think some of those yellow fruits are coming through again, some kind of uh, maybe red apple. and mm. uh... It's not super sweet though, no. in the way that no, no, no. modern day space side whiskey is. Um, I think perhaps, you know, having had, having it been in the cask for over two decades, obviously mm. that's mellowed out, but yeah. quite sort of oaky and quite woody. Um, it's, yeah, a nice aroma. Mm. It's not 
it's captivating me. No, it's, it is safe. It is what I expect from a nondescript space side whiskey. Yep. It doesn't smell particularly old. But mm. I would, you know, I think after twenty two years, maybe the cask can over overtake it. What I'd say is, I don't know. We don't know the style of wood that this is in. No, um, I imagine it was a fairly inactive. Cask. Kind of Europe, um, yeah. Maybe American oak, maybe European oak. Yeah. But if it's a European oak, yeah, certainly not yeah. a fresh Mat but... Matured in oak cask, which, <laughs> which tells us precisely nothing. Well, I'm glad it's legally Scotch whiskey. Yeah. Um, let's have a little taste, see what you think. I think we're going to like it, to be honest. What do you think? Oh. Yeah, it's got a bit of bite to it, doesn't it? Let's have a bit of... Yeah, it's, it's, to be honest, the spice is from, it feels like it's from the alcohol, mm. rather than any kind of cask influence. Um, it's full of flavour, that is full of flavour. Mm. It's not something I can narrow down particularly much. It, it's maybe quite malty in character. I don't feel like it's picked up, I don't know, I think after 22 years in I, cask. I would, no way I would suggest no. that's 22 years old. Like, that's a long old time, you'd expect it to have... You know, layers and layers of complexity to it. This is, I don't know, like an inoffensive whiskey. But I think yeah. if somebody gave this to me and said, this is, you know, a blended malt from the 1980s, mm -hmm. you mm. think, yeah, fine. Um, it tastes like a Speyside Highland unpeated whiskey. Yeah. About 10 years old, I would say. Um, yeah. It's malty, got a nice character. Um, it's got kind of medium finish. It's not. But there is, as you're right, there's not much complexity to it. It's quite a straightforward whiskey for us to try and analyse yeah. today, to be honest. I think it's got more on the finish than I was expecting from the mm -hmm. nose. I thought on the nose, I expected it to kind of be there and just disappear, and that's that's it. Uh, it's it's a, just going to yeah. linger. It's a hard thing to judge if this was their first year of making whiskey. Yeah, maybe they didn't really know how everything worked. <laughs> I, I feel like all these new distilleries that have opened in the last 10, 20 years probably already had, this is what our character is going to be, this is yeah. what we're going to do. Maybe this was, I mean, I would imagine this was sold into blenders mm. um, originally. It's certainly, I would assume, to be used for White Mackay nowadays. Yep. Because it's not a malt whiskey that is pushed. We don't see older age statements from them. Mm. Obviously, 2007 kind of limits them, but you still think there would be, from now, a, a, yep. a kind of reasonable age statement come out. Um, but they're obviously quite successful with what they're doing with their kind of very yeah. affordable... Like, they do loads of different red wine casks and such. Yeah, it's got, they seem to be pushing it quite aggressively. Yeah. Um, whether they're making any money from it. It's, it's hard to tell, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this dram, I think it's, again, nice to try. It's, you know, as you say, it's going back in time. Yeah, it's a, taste set, of a history. step back into the late 80s in Italy, where this is probably quite a fancy premium offering yeah. for them. And I think it's, they've maybe been taken advantage yeah. of by a but kind think, of ordinary whiskey. Absolutely. But I think a week from now, when people say, oh, Ross, how was your... Last filming session with with Bevy, this isn't going to be one that you're going to be like, oh, no. I've had this amazing it, time with. No, it's, it's true. Very, it's quite forgetful. It's true, but at the same time, if somebody ever and it's unlikely brings up Tam Navilla, and I'll say, oh well, I did have yeah. one from the year it started, which is quite cool to see. Yeah, nice thing to try, but yeah, not, not, not a life changing right. liquid. Cheers. Cheers. Nice to try. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more Bevy content. We want to hear what you think, your best whiskey experiences, the whiskies you want us to try. It's a really exciting journey we're on, so make sure to join us. Download the Bevy app on Google Play and App Store to keep track of your whiskey journey, connect with your whiskey friends, keep track of your favourites, anything you could ever want to do with whiskey, all in one place. It's the definitive whiskey companion.